Another week has gone by and this time I think the winners are Hexorb Sorceress, Overdress and Eugene. Yeah, those are some surprising names this week. Hey Carfathers, welcome back to another Carven update and today we do once again the weekly roundup. Yes, I know this video is quite late, I'm bu quite busy with transitioning into a new job and this new job is taking up a lot of time so bear with me as I'm go getting used to this new work schedule and hopefully this won't happen again for next week. But that aside, we've got a lot of new interesting cards to talk about that were released last week or revealed last week. So let's jump straight into these new cards and let's start with the new Cater Sanctuary Hex Orb Sorceress cards because these cards are actually really interesting and first off we got a brand new Dawar Grade 3 which is Twin Chain Great Magic Totone and Totone has the skill Auto Rigard Circle at the end of the battle your unit attacked cost Countless 1 and perform all of the effects below according to the trigger units revealed for the drive check of that battle critical choose one of your opponent's rearguards and put it on the bottom of their deck from trigger choose one of your grade 2 or less rear guards and stand it so very important to note here is that basically whenever your vanguard attacks because those are the ones that's going to have drive check in hexorp sorcerers however if you hit the over trigger this can then also apply as this is not a once per turn but basically when your vanguard attacks and you hit triggers you can use this unit's ability to gain extra additional effects on top of those triggers now the interesting thing here is that if you hit a critical and a front and then you use the skill you get actually both versions of this skill as it doesn't specify that you can only get one of the two if you hit them both in one drive check you get them both but very important note here is that if you hit double critical or double front you don't get double the value of this skill as it doesn't really count for that the critical aspect isn't really that interesting because it's basically just one pseudo pop but the standing of your rearguard is actually really interesting because now you can go potentially for a more front heavy variant of Hexorb Sorceress and potentially make a more consistent 4 attack deck out of your Hexorb Sorceress strategy. And because this only costs 1 counterblast, it's also more sustainable than the Lepisto variant which costs 2 counterblasts to reset. But the Lepisto is a bit more consistent because for the Lepisto you need to just drive check any triggers and you aren't waiting until you hit a front. But the interesting thing is that this card actually immediately has some synergy with another card that got revealed because we also got a new grade two, which is Desire Magic as Nono. And as Nono has the skill, auto regular circle once a turn, when this unit attacks, if your Vanguard is Hexorp Sorceress or Pentagleam Sorceress, so the grade two or the grade three of the right line, cost, discard a card from your hand, look the two cards from the top of your deck, choose up to two cards from among them, Put them on the top of your deck in any order and put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. This unit gets power plus 10k until the end of turn. So for one discard, you effectively can manipulate the top two cards of your deck and it gains an additional 10k power. Honestly, for one discard, I think that's that's pretty valid for the amount of resource and the value you're going to get out of that one card as being able to manipulate the top two cards of your deck and being able to put them on the bottom of your deck is actually very useful because a lot of skills only allow you to stack them on the top of the deck in any order and don't allow you to immediately put them on the bottom of the deck if they're not useful so that's a big plus of this skill and the extra 10k power is a nice added bonus to it but if we take a look at the grade 3 we just talked about, because we can potentially resend the unit and the power stays until the end of turn, you can potentially double up the value of the additional 10k power. So there is definitely inherent synergy between those cards and definitely can come up. And honestly, might not be a bad pick in a potential different strategy for Hexor Sorceress. Now moving on, we got some new Dark States cards and we finally get some actual Bruce support. We started with a new double or grade 2 in the likes of Diabolus Striker Lyle or Leo or however that's supposed to be said. And its skill is auto when it's units placed on a rear guard circle cost counterblast 1 and this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of turn. Then if you are in final rush, soul charge 2, choose a card from your soul and call to an open rear guard circle. Now this is kind of a tricky card in how much value you can generate because it feels a bit underwhelming in what we already got in Bruce in how the deck is functioning. Because 
Basically, you cannot really place this card until you get into Final Rush because it's very wasteful if you do it in the early game because it's on a play skill and you only get 5k power for a counter blast, which is not good. Then if you place it on during Final Rush, it becomes a 15k attacker, which basically every other grade 2 already becomes. And then for extra addition on top of the counter blast, you get 2 soul, which is nice, and you can call a unit to the open record circle. Now, that feels kind of underwhelming if you compare it with cards like Leonard, as well as Derek, which is where this card is going to compete with, as it's another grade 2 for Bruce. Now, there might be some synergies that I'm overlooking with this card, because it allows you to call a card from your soul to an open record circle, so if, for example, you use Leonard, you call this card out with Leonard onto the open column, and then you can use its skill to potentially call a grade 1 behind it, maybe a proto bulb, and then you can use the proto bulb at the end of your turn with your final attack to maybe get some other cards out of your soul or something. There might be some strategies or some combos that can come up here, but I'm not so sure if it actually warrants the slot in the deck. Maybe it can be like a tech card, like a one of or a two of for those scenarios. But it's a bit iffy as it's already as it's as seen as it's competing with some other very powerful card within Bruce. Now moving on to a great free for Bruce, we've got Diabolus Charger Devon. And Devon has the ability on a rear circle when your rear guard stand, if you are in final rush, this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of the turn. Include this unit. This is not a once per turn, so basically if you restand your front row, it gets an additional 10k power. It's not really that great, it probably won't be played unless you maybe are looking for a budget deck, but besides that, not really a card that you want to play as there are way better grade freeze that you have access to. And finally we've got a generic grade 2 for Dark Sage, which is Lightning Vortex Tinged Gear Aland, and it has the skill Act on the Regal Circle once a turn, if your soul has 2 or more grade 3 cards, cast discard a card from your hand, and this unit gets power plus 15k until the end of the turn. 25k meter for discard with a very annoying condition to be met before you can even use the skill. Yeah, I don't really think this is going to be seen playing any type of deck because we have better beaters that are easier to attain. So we can basically move on. And moving on, we've got some more Stoic Chaos support. We've got one card for Sylvan Horn Beast Magnolia. And it's this cute grade 1, which is Sylvan Horn Beast Elfin. And its skill is continuous from back row rearguard circle. During the battle this unit attacked, when your opponent would call cards from their hand to the Guardian Circle, they must call two or more at the same time. So basically the battle door effect. And with Magnolia giving the ability to allow this card to attack from the back row, it becomes a 13k attacker, which is honestly ideal for this situation, because that means either your opponent needs to intercept with it, or they're forced to waste two cards from their hand on an attack that they could probably guard with just 5k shield. So this is just going to waste a lot of shield from your opponent's hand, or they're going to waste like maybe a PG without using the PG effect, or just wasting potentially Persona right targets. So this could honestly be a nice tech card if you want to go that route. It's not bad, it's also not really powerful, but it's definitely useful. And then the other card that we got for Stoikea is a Zorga support card in the form of this great free Wicked Chef, with the ability auto when a unit is placed on the record circle from drop, Choose a Blitz Order from your drop and you may put it into your hand. So basically, if you resurrect this card with any of the resurrect abilities for Zorga, you immediately get a free card in your hand, which specifically is going to be a Blitz Order. This could be useful if we go for a more defensive route with Zorga, where you're going to rely on your Blitz Orders more often, like Big Shield or potentially Ghost Chase. This could be something interesting here with a new mechanic or a new engine. But I'm not really well first enough with Sorga to know if this card is actually going to be used for or actually going to be good. I don't think it's going to see any play right now, but it definitely could come up if we get more Blitz Orders. As seen as it's a generic Blitz Order fetcher, so this could be a tech card later down the line if there's a very important Blitz Order that we effectively want to see every single turn. This allows us to potentially get to that every single turn. Now moving on, we've got some brand gauge support cards and we start off with a new grade one which is Cardinal Noise Suprema. And take a look at the stats on this card. It got 10k shield and 10k base. That's not what we are used to with grade ones because they're usually 8k base and most cards only have 5k shield. There is a trade-off for having this base value on this card because it has a skill continues from hand. If your world is not Abyssal Dark Knight, this card cannot be normal called, including the Guardian Circle. Overall, this card is basically outclassed 
from what we already got in brand game. We already got better boosters and we got better shield cards that will work with the Abyssal Dark Knight status that basically are 15k shields or sometimes even more. So there isn't really a lot of reason to play this card. The only upside to this card is that it doesn't cost you any resources, whereas some of the other cards with the higher shield cost you like Counter Blast or Soul Blast. So if that's an issue, you can go for this one. But honestly, I don't really see that this card is going to be played in any type of deck. Now, another great one that we got for Brandgate is Gravidia AB. And AB has a skill, auto when it's units placed on the rearguard circle, if your order zone has three or more meteorites, Cost, counter plus one, draw a card, choose up to one meteorite from your hand and put it into your order zone. So if we just look at the skill, it doesn't generate actual value. You draw one and you immediately put one card from your hand into the order zone. So you don't plus off the skill. So you might think to yourself, What's the use of this card and why am I wasting a counter blast on the skill? The truth about this card is that it's actually very useful for the uh, Meteor deck, for the Gravidia deck, because the Gravidia deck runs a lot of the Meteorite Order cards, which are basically zero shield cards. And because of that, it will happen quite often that you will have a hand with a couple of cards that basically are zero shield and you want to get rid of them as fast as possible and with only being able to play one order a turn that might be an issue this card allows you to circumvent that problem or that restriction and being able to forcefully put more of those cards with zero shield value in your hand onto the board that can potentially synergize with your vanguard and then potentially draw into another card which hopefully will be a unit or just raw shield value so this allows you to basically cycle through your deck and get rid of those cards that are basically dead weight in your hand which definitely has a role and a purpose and a function within the Gravidia right line so if you want to go that route this is definitely a playable card it's going to be one of the staple cards or you're going to use it in almost every deck i'm not so sure it probably will be a tech card but we have to wait and see how the deck is going to shape up after set four but definitely a useful card nonetheless and then the final card that we got for brandgate is this grade two melting monster or sidrian and it has a skill although when it's placed in a regular circle draw a card choose a card from your hand and discard it it's a very simple basic cycle skill. It's the best type of cycle because you first draw and then you discard. So you have full agency of the value you're going to generate of this card. Is this card going to see play in any of the Brandgate decks? Probably not. But it all comes down to the fact if we're going to see a deck within this nation that relies on specific cards for combo pieces. If that's going to be the case, this card might definitely see play in that variant. But I don't really believe that's a variant that we're having right now in Brandgate. But I might be wrong. But the fact that this is a free cycle and the best type of cycle might definitely give this card the potential of being used somewhere in the future. Or maybe in premium in one of the other clans that synergize with Brandgate. We just have to wait and see. Definitely a solid card nonetheless. And then finally, we've got the two cards for Dragon Empire. And these are probably just like the cards that we got for Hexorb Sorceress. One of the more exciting cards that we got the released this week. As first off, we got the dedicated Eugene support card in this double or grade two twin bullet of Dust Storm Travis. And Travis has the skill act on rearguard circle once a turn. If your opponent's rearguard was retired this turn, cost counter bless one, soul charge one. Choose one of your opponent's rearguards and retire it. And this unit gets power plus 10k until the end of turn. That's actually really good. Already with just counter plus one and retire a unit, I would say that's playable. That's actually really good because that's solid value you're generating. That's counter plus one, plus one on card advantage, solid. But then on top of that, you get a soul, which is neat with Eugene. Because you use your soul for various skills, which definitely synergize very nicely with the deck. But then on top of it, it also gains an initial 10k power, which is even more value on top of it. It's a cherry on top of the uh, cream the crop of this card, which is actually a lot of effects within one single skill. And probably will be one of the better rearguards you can use, Eugene. The only issue that we have with this card is that to, in order to get access to the entire skill is that you first need to be able to retire one of your opponent's rearguards. If they do not have a field, this card is effectively a vanilla card that doesn't do anything. That's the only problem. So if we are in a format where players can easily remove their entire field and not allow you to retire the thing with Eugene, 
this might be an issue. So it all comes down to the scenario and the situation, how the meta is evolving, if this card is going to be solid or not. If it's very easy to just retire every single turn, at least one unit on your opponent's side of the field, this card is going to be amazing. If they have half boards or maybe even filled boards, this card is going to be insane because it gives you even more value on top of that. It all comes down to the scenario. Definitely a very good card for Eugene to have at least access into, into their arsenal. We just have to wait and see if we're going to use this card immediately or we maybe have to wait a couple of months before we are in a more favorable meta for Eugene in general. And then for the final card that we've got this week, we've got a brand new grade 2 normal order in the likes of Sublimiting Wishes. And this normal order for Overdress is actually pretty nice as its skill is play this with cost, soul bless one, so discard and one soul bless, choose one of your units in the overdress state and until the end of turn it gets auto rigor circle when this unit attacks a vanguard counter charge one. In general sense I would say this is a bad card because you discard one and you use a soul bless to generate just one counter charge and that's not great. But in Overdress, it's a different story because the value you're generating from one counter blast in a deck is quite significant. You get a Persona Ride Power buff to the front row, you have a Resending Rear Guard, you have a potential multi tech engine or a very strong beefy unit that can also come out of nowhere. Or we have Pot of Greed on legs. There is a lot of value to be had with one counter blast in this deck. So being able to now finally have another way to generate counter charge is actually really useful. And this card can definitely see play for that sole reason on its own. But it also has a very nice synergy with Valiente. Because this effect isn't once per turn. And because Valiente can potentially restand, you can generate potentially double counter charge out of one effect. And the interesting aspect about this is, is that they can never deny a Valiente whatsoever. Because if you have no counter less face up, you can use this effect on your Valiente attack with Valiente and immediately counter charge the potential counter blast you're using to restand. So immediately once Valiente swings, his restand is going to be live and they have to guard it. If they do not guard it, you use the counter blast, it restands, you attack and you counter charge again, which basically results in a completely free Valiente, which is pretty good. So I would say this card is definitely playable. We have to wait and see if it's going to be even better with the new variant of Overdress because we also have the new Verena that's going to come out, this big beefy unit. So we have to wait and see if that uses Counter Blast or something. So it's a bit too early to say if this is going to be the new tech card or potential staple card for Overdress because we have still a lot of room to speculate with how this deck might shape up after set 4. But overall, I'm loving the design of this card and, can, and I definitely see usefulness within this card within the current variant of Overdress. But with it said, that's also all the cards that we got this week. Overall, very exciting stuff, and I cannot wait to see what the future holds in store for us. And as soon as I already saw what cards were released or revealed in the episode of the anime, this time around, as a Gear Chronicle main, I am very excited for the future because I already see the potential of some very very annoying shenanigans in premium but i will wait till we get more information for what we can do with that and once everything is confirmed oh you can bet your ass i'm going to make it going to talk about it because there's a lot of interesting potential and mind you potential things that could happen this week or potentially next week but i'm getting ahead of myself i want to know what you guys think of these card reveals so let me know in the comments down below which of the new reveals from last week or this week however you want to see it which one are you the most excited about so let me know in the comments down below all your thoughts and opinions about these cards as always this video has been brought to you by our lovely patrons over patreon.com slash insider you guys are amazing if you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel you can simply go to patreon.com slash ring insider and become a patron today but with that said i've missed a time leap and i'll see you guys in the next one